Okay, no more title screens, and I've changed my name in case you didn't notice. I'm going with Physics Explained. Okay, and I'm just going to jump right into it. So this is the new chapter, chapter six, and we're doing centripetal acceleration. So uh, this is how do you find the acceleration of an object moving in a circle, and I'm going to drive the formula for you. Yes. Now, let's point out something. This is centripetal acceleration. Let's break that into two words. Okay, because it's important. This is center, centra, right? Center. And this is pointing. So this is the center pointing acceleration. So this is the acceleration of an object moving in a circle. But what about this word, centrifugal? I like to say it like that. Centrifugal, but it's centrifugal. Okay, here we have the same thing. Cent center. Now what about this part? What does that mean? Well, fugitive, it's like that, same thing, fleeing. So this is center fleeing force. This is a force pointing away from the circle. This is technically called a fake force. I just want to point that out. We're not going to go over it right now. I'll cover it later. So a fake force is a force we put in an accelerating reference frame to make things work. Uh, it's not a real interaction. So you'll hear people say, don't use this word, okay? And probably they're right because it can get dangerous. So just be careful with this. I want you to know you're, you're big, you're grownups, right? So you can um, know the difference between these two words. But I'm going to talk about this one, uh, which is the acceleration of an object moving in a circle. So let's derive the following formula. Start with a blank sheet of paper and a circle. I was gonna do a demo, but I'm like, we're keeping it simple. We're going low tech. Okay, so here I have, uh, one of the things, I hope I don't mess it up right now, let's see if I do it. No, I kinda of messed up. One of the things for drawing circles is to draw a dot, so it usually helps that way. Okay, so here is an object moving in a circular path. And the radius of this, that is a circle, be quiet, uh, is a radius, I'll call that R. And so right here, I have the object and it has some velocity v1, it's a vector, and then a little bit later has a velocity the same magnitude but in a different direction v2. And so right here you can see how we know that it is indeed accelerating. Remember the acceleration is defined as the change in velocity over the change in time. So even if it's going 10 meters per second and still 10 meters per second, this is a value. Um, you don't have to change the magnitude in order to change uh, the back, the velocity. So it can still accelerate. Actually, let's do this uh, change in velocity. So if I draw this out, I have V1 right there. V2 is the same length right there. And this is uh, the angle that's delta theta. So that's delta theta. And that is delta V. So you see it gets from the final to the initial. From the initial to the final. Wait, final minus, yeah, that's right. That's how you find that, okay. So that's the, the direction that the velocity changed that way. And so if I draw that up here, let me put it in the red pen where I lost my red pen. There it is. That's the direction of the acceleration in, during that interval. Okay, so we're dealing with a finite time interval, but you can imagine as this time interval gets really, really small, then you could actually say that's pointing towards the center of the circle. The acceleration points towards the center of the circle, centripetal. That's where that comes from. Okay, but we want to find out the magnitude of that. So that's how you get the direction. What about the magnitude? Okay, so assume that this is a really, really skinny triangle. Okay, uh, then it's, and in fact, I'll draw it super skinny. There's V1, V2, and these have the same magnitude. So it's not a right triangle, okay? But it kind of almost is. So it's almost, over, and this angle is small enough that this delta V is actually, I could write this delta V magnitude now as uh, V1 delta theta. Right, because this is like the arc length of that triangle. It's not actually an arc length, but it's pretty darn close. And as delta theta gets smaller and smaller, then this becomes closer and closer to being true. 
Okay, so we're not going to do calculus here, but I just want to show you that that's actually where that comes from. Okay, so that's my delta V, uh, and, and this is the magnitude of V1, which is the same as magnitude of V2. So I can actually write delta V, uh, and technically it would be like this, but it's just going to be V delta theta. So V is just the velocity. Now I can put that in up here. So I can say the magnitude of the acceleration is the magnitude of the change in velocity over the change in time. The time has no is not a vector anyway. So I can put in V delta theta over delta T. So now there's a couple options that I can move forward here. This is the change in theta with respect to time. So this can also be defined as the angular velocity as the change in theta over the change in time. And that's also equal to the linear velocity divided by the radius, which I didn't derive that, but this comes up a lot that I think it's okay to use. So now if I put this in up here, I get the acceleration is V, V over R, V squared over R. So the magnitude of the acceleration is V squared over R. Now if I want to use the angular velocity instead, then if I put in V over R, if I put uh, V is equal to R omega, this would be equal to omega squared times r. So there's two important things. One, the direction's pointing toward the center of the circle, and two, this is the magnitude. So you, you've seen this before, you've felt this before. When you drive in a car, uh, you can feel, when you push the acceleration pedal, the accelerator, you can feel getting pushed back. That's in the opposite direction that you're accelerating. And the same is true when you turn, you get you get pushed, you feel pushed in the opposite direction. So as you turn a, go in a roundabout, you can feel pushed out because you're actually accelerating towards the center. Uh, now, if you go faster around that roundabout, if you increase the velocity, your acceleration increases. You can feel that. If you go in a smaller circle, if you uh, decrease R, you also increase the acceleration. Okay, so these are the two important points about the uh, centripetal acceleration. The directions towards the center, you get that from the name, centripetal acceleration, and the magnitude is V squared over R.